In the previous videos, we've gone over a couple different things. We've talked about mouse X, mouse Y, if someone is actually pressing the mouse, these different ways that people can interact. And taking that a little bit further, I've done quite a bit more with it. This is uh, <laughs> pretty long, and uh, I'll show you uh, some of what I've been playing with and uh, how to add some more things to it. There's only a little bit in here that I haven't actually shown, um, but it's, it's thinking about how to apply it differently and creatively. Now I've also played a little bit with this, right? And so let me show you what this is actually doing right now, what all this code does. So here's the new thing that I've been playing with uh, a good chunk of yesterday. And as I move the mouse around, the color of these little like brick shapes changes. And you can see that the speed is varying. This is not lag, the frame rate is actually changing um, on the application. And then if I click and hold down right here, it goes gray, and if I let go, it comes back. Although, exactly when that happens also might vary depending on the current frame rate. If I click and hold somewhere else, that does not happen. So, so I'll show you how some of that works. First off, how do we do this, right? So before, it was a little white square in the top left, right? So I've moved it to the center, and I've made the background gray. So I did that on the hello.html file. Inside of the page, in the body tag, I've added a background color, and I've added some style. Now this style, the width is 600 pixels, for the body, that is the same size as what our create canvas is, right? So our create canvas is 600 wide and 400 tall. And so that's what I did here for the width on the style. And then to make it centered, I made margins zero, which it doesn't really mean anything, but this auto part right after that, that's what makes this centered in the middle. And then to have the spacing up here, that's these BR tags. So if we do show page source, and if you can't do show page source, if you don't have that option when you right click, you might want to go into your preferences, your, your browser preferences, and make sure that you have develop selected. So in Safari, it's under preferences, under advanced. If you're in Chrome or Firefox, and you don't see it when you, when you right click, uh, you might have to find that somewhere else. So on our source, here we have this is exactly what you were seeing there, um, but the way that it actually loads it with the JavaScript and everything is a little different. Let's see if we can do inspect element. There we go. So this is a little different. So show page source and inspect element are slightly different. Show page source is exactly what I typed in that was sent to the browser, whereas inspect element is the way the browser is interpreting that code, which if the code is written really cleanly, should be the same, but isn't always. With p5.js, it's not exactly the same because the JavaScript will then load in this canvas element, which is this thing here, right? And we don't have to do that, it does it for us. So you can see the BR tags, right? That's the, the break up here, the spacing, and then this canvas element that's being loaded in by the p5.js. Okay, so now for the other bits. If I go back to sketch.js, all right, I've made the frame rate here to be five, and then in here, at the very start of this function, well, almost the very start, I've changed the frame rate to be a random integer between one and 150 divided by 10, and that's why this frame rate is jumping around randomly and why it's changing. So random followed by uh, some values, we'll choose a, a random value between those two integers, right? So this is like one little chunk of code here. And then I've divided it by 10, and all that together is being processed by this frame rate uh, line of code, right? Up here I hit frame rate five, so this is consistent. But setup only runs once. The draw loop is running again and again, which we've talked about. And so every time the draw loop runs again, every time the uh, colors of the blocks are chosen, this is changing. Now that also affects the responsiveness, right? So that's why sometimes if I click and hold, or if I let go, it's not automatic because it also depends on when the straw loop happens again. Because it's checking for that mouse interaction when the straw loop runs again. And if the frame rate has been slowed down, then it might take a moment, right? So if I just click, it might not see it at all because it's, does it happen to see it 
at the moment that I'm doing it when this loop happens to be running again, right? If I click and hold at the wrong time and it's not checking, then it won't see it, which is why by default the frame rate's pretty fast. Okay, so now about this button. Let's actually go ahead and uh, let's make a new one. Let's make a new sketch.js. So that way we can talk about sort of how the button works. I'm gonna rename this one. Call it like bricks or something. And then I'm gonna take my sketch color JS. This is the one that I made before. So if you remember this one, if I refresh this, this is the one where it where it colors, right? We played with that a little bit. I make a copy of this one because the code was pretty clean and I can remove stuff out without having all this mess. So let's see, this is my coloring. Maybe sketch.coloring just so that way it doesn't get confusing or it's less confusing if I look at it again in the future. And we've got this copy here, right? Um, with the original name. So now I've got this, right? So this is what we made before. This is how we made it do uh, this kaleidoscope effect, right? And the coloration. So I'm gonna change this around a lot. I'm gonna change it around completely. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna make four, actually I'm gonna make two rectangles. I'm gonna make two rectangles. So let's do this rectangle, right? And we've got these values here. So we need an X and a Y. So this will be zero, zero. And I need a width. I'm gonna want it to take up half of the canvas. What I'm thinking is it'll be half of the canvas like this, and they are gonna be half of the canvas there. I'm gonna make it that when the mouse hovers over it or clicks on it, it changes color or something like that, right? So this will allow you to see how to do mouse interactivity in a localized spot, so it's not just everywhere. Width will be half of the width, so that's 300. But the height is still going to be 400 because I want it to be the whole side, the whole left side. So this will still be 400. And then that's fine. For fill, what do I want to do for the fill? I think I'm going to make it uh, be basically transparent except for when your mouse uh, maybe hovers over it. So that means that this will need to be... Actually, the color doesn't really matter right because the last value is going to be zero for transparency uh, but let's make one side red and one side blue so if it's red the first value is going to be f and then zero zero and then transparent is another zero uh, don't forget our semicolons so if we refresh this oh i forgot about the stroke let's also do no stroke although by forgetting about the stroke you can see that my uh, rectangle does exist right now we can't see it exists, but we know it's still there, right? Because we had just done that. And I'm gonna make another one. And this one will be at uh, 300, right? It'll still be at zero, it's still gonna be at the top, right? Because the height doesn't change, just the, just the width. And uh, the, these don't change either, right? So we're changing where it starts to load, but we're not changing the height and the width, and we're not changing uh, the starting point on the Y axis, And we actually don't need those because uh, that's gonna stay the same from here. We don't need to duplicate that. So right now we have two invisible rectangles. And if I delete no stroke, we can see it's working. There we go, perfect, put that back. And now how to make it so that when you mouse over it, it actually changes or does something. So here we're going to use the the if statement that we've played with before. So if something is true, then this will happen. Else, nothing's going to happen, right? Or, well, I mean, we could decide something else, right? So what is the condition? What is going to be true? And that has to do with our mouse X and our mouse Y. So we're going to say that if mouse X, and it's not going to be true, instead it needs to be... So that needs to be a value. If mouse x is like less than or greater than something, then something will happen. So on the x, that's this way, and y is this way. We're not really worried about y so much, we're just worried about x, right? So if it's on this side, this block will light up, and if it's on this side, that block will light up. If mouse x is less than or equal to 300, then 
let's redraw this rectangle to be red but with full full opacity right zero transparency right it's gonna be full full alpha so if we run it hmm So, if I make this less than, and we refresh it, why is that not working? Okay. So, greater than works, but less than doesn't work. Let's try doing another one, and we can do, and this can be zero. So, the reason it's not changing is it is, it is drawing new uh, rectangles on top of this one, but they have no opacity. They're completely transparent, so we're still seeing the red one through it. So what we need to do is we need to add a background here, and this background needs to be the same color as this, which the hex value is 777, and keep in mind that needs to be in quotes, right, because it is a string. So if we save this and we refresh this, there we go. Right, so when it's here, it's red, and when it's here, it's not red, right? And we're doing that by basically drawing a new background each time, right? So every time this runs a loop now, the background is drawn. We have a red square drawn, and in actuality, we don't even need this chunk up here anymore because we're doing it all here as well. Now, the one thing we might wanna do is we might wanna put no stroke up here, right? We don't wanna stroke at all. So instead of repeating it for both, we can just keep it up here, right? So it's running that, that command one time, make it a little bit more efficient for the computer. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that, right? We don't need the fill in there, right? And actually, uh, we should be able to get rid of this additional thing now that I've figured out what the problem was. So if I delete this, right? Because this was just turning it into being transparent. But transparent means we can't see it at all, right? And this gray background is already there, so why run this whole thing again anyway? So this is actually all we need here, right? Background, no stroke, and here. So if we save it and we refresh, let's just confirm it works. There we go. Background, no stroke, a new fill value, right? And a new rectangle. Now the other thing that we can do is actually, I had wanted there to be a blue rectangle on the other side, right? So actually we do need this back, but instead of it being a transparent square, it's going to be a blue square. So R, G, B, right? This last value is for blue, so that's gonna be F. And then we want the position to be different. If we save it and run it right now, it's a blue or red depending on where this is. But I actually want this one to be blue, not this one to be blue. So that means I need to move the where it is on the X axis over 300 pixels, right? Because that's half of the canvas size. So if I do that, save and refresh, there we go. And I thought this could be interesting too, sort of similar to what I had made on the other one. I thought it would be cool to have a whole bunch of like little bitty squares, right? And it could be uh, almost like pixels, right? And they would all be invisible, or basically they wouldn't exist at all. And when you moved your mouse in that spot, right, when you moved your mouse um, over that X and Y location, then it would become a color, right? And maybe depending on where they moved their mouse, maybe they could reveal what the picture was of, right? So that would mean you would also need to include um, mouse Y in here. And you can do that, you can add additional conditionals with a double ampersand, and then you can add in the mouse Y. So here we could say, only if it's less than or equal to 300. Ooh, actually, let's do 200 because that's half of this. And we could add in another one here. Mouse Y is greater than or equal to 200. And if we can save and refresh, right? So that works. Up here, nothing draws, right? And down here, nothing draws, right? So up here, it draws because the mouse is less than 300 and it's less than 200 here-ish, and over here, it doesn't draw because it's less than the 200 here, but it's greater than the 300 here, right? And then down here it works because greater than the 200 here, 
greater than 300 here. I also thought it could be kind of fun too to have sort of this empty space, right? And if they find it, right? If they put their mouse over it, right? Then they could like find the clue, right? Until they put their mouse over it, they don't, they don't see it. Uh, so there's different things like that that you could do and those could be fun things to play with. The way that my example worked that I had shown you, let's see, let's rename this. Size. Change this back to sketch. And if I refresh this, the way this worked is all of these bricks, the color is based on where the mouse is, the mouse X and Y value, like we did before with the colored brush. Uh, but instead, I had added in some randomization as well. So if I open this in Atom, each one of these is a fill value, right? And I'm taking the mouse X and I'm subtracting by a random amount. And then here, the green value is mouse X plus mouse Y divided by two minus a random value. And then the blue value was mouse Y minus a random value. And that's why you sort of get this flicker and this, this variation. As it went over to the right and as it went down, I increased the random amount. So the colors become more erratic and more chaotic as you go this way and as you go this way. And so this bottom corner is the most chaotic and the most erratic. You get the most uh, variation in color and in value down there. I thought that'd be kind of interesting. I don't actually really like this click and hold down, but now I liked the idea of it. But now I think maybe I should move it down here because uh, I think it kind of takes away from my, uh, my colors here. Or maybe I'll just delete it all together. I don't know. Anyway, so that's how you can create buttons and how you can create little areas that are interactive only when you're in that location.